Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good day on Thursday and Friday. How many of you from local Telford? Two. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you're all from uh, within UK or out of UK. Thanks, everyone, for coming out to the SQL Bits. Thank you on behalf of SQL Bits, and thank you for attending this session. This session is about advanced reporting techniques and uh, managing reports. This would be like mostly targeted towards database administrators who would like to have uh, not only administering the database, but also the report manager and also the instances with, in terms of reporting things. In perspective of like BI, DB developers and administrators, there are plenty of areas where they could develop their reports and manage it. But when it comes to administration, they have to further manage it in such a way that they can better have their area control very well with the accounts, users, reports, resources, and many areas. We'll be seeing that in detail with some demos. Thanks for the sponsors. They make the event very successful for us. About me, I'm Subramani Paramasivam, in short, Mani. Uh, we run the uh, SQL with EuroSQL Manuka Limited. It's a high-end professional technical consultancy and training services, not only on Microsoft SQL Server, but also on SAP Business Objects. So we deal with database and business intelligence in our day-to-day -day life. And you can follow us on our, uh, any of the social networking media. If you want more information, you can visit EuroSQLman.com, or you can send an email to info at EuroSQLman.com. A quick information, this duration was supposed to be at 65 minutes, so roughly we have taken already 5-10 minutes, so I'll try to make sure that we have it delivered on time. And uh, if at all you feel like using the restrooms during the sessions, you feel, to, feel free to do so, and you know where the restrooms are. Please silence your phones, that's a regular information what we give, and if any questions during the event, please raise your hands, I'll try to answer it as much as I can, but we still have some time restrictions, so we'll try to cover it within the short period of time, and also we'll have a separate Q&A sessions at the end of the sli slides. So I have some questions to start with from my side to ask you. So very basic questions to see what my audience are here. How many of you are database developers? Fair amount of crowd. How many of you are DBAs? Good. How many of you are BI developers? How many of you raised three, like hands for all three, or any two? So they're all rounders. Oh, plenty of all rounders there. That's good. In this crowd, how many of you have managed and maintained report manager? Good. How many of you managed the report systems with custom-based applications? Just three, four. So when I say custom applications, like report manager is not only the tool to manage your reports users, you can also build your own custom-based applications, and that is where you have your report manager capability where it enables the interface to be built with any third-party applications. So not necessarily that every, every corporate client should see the same phase of report manager every time. We know that that hasn't changed the big phase, but we still can identify by looking at the screens. That's 2005, that's 2008, then this is 2012. So we can find a little difference between the versions of report manager. But in terms of to have your own bespoke applications, you, what you would have is you can create your own .NET application, and you can hook that up directly towards your report, uh, report server database. In that way, you can manage your reports with Report Manager, and it will be still accessible with your custom-based applications. Objectives on completion of the sessions, you'll be able to better understand some of the linked reports, report builders, and report history and snapshots, managing security, subscriptions, et cetera. I have a dozen of area where I want to cover up with these uh, uh, managing reportings and uh, report manager areas. So we will see everything in detail with some demos on it. First one is the architecture. So just to have a quick start on the architecture area, we have uh, this picture here. Let me zoom a bit. OK, so this architecture, what you are seeing, it's a three tire. And this applies to native mode. So I'm sure you all know the difference between native mode reporting services as well as with SharePoint mode. Yes? Good. So in terms of native mode, I'm not going to touch anything about SharePoint mode, but it's only going to talk about native mode and report manager, as that session is about. In this native mode, we have the very base data tire where we define our data sources, and which connects to the actual user and databases. It can be a staging, it can be to any live applications. Middle, we have the report server components of which you have five 
interfaces, sorry, uh, two processes, one interfaces and five extensions, which actually compose all your report server units in that one. So that's the middle layer. And the last one is the application layer where you'll have your end user tools. So this is a three-tier architecture. As you all know, uh, it's a, so, I'm sorry. I'm sure I lost my screen, actually. Uh, it's not accepting the new bits. Yeah, should be okay. Set. That's one zero two four seven six eight. Okay. Sorry about that. So the SSRS architecture itself is a .NET based, .NET framework based platform. It enables any end users to create their own interfaces with custom based applications. And also it is, uh, it is using the reports of a database that's a very key engine, very important vital part of the reports of our components. When I said about the two types of modes, we have the native mode and the SharePoint mode. In terms of 2014 SQL Server version onwards, like we have plenty of changes that have been happening which you're actually seeing out. I'm just going to highlight one of the main features of the uh, difference between native mode and the SharePoint mode. I'm not going to attach every single detail of them. So if you can see linked reports, my reports, my subscriptions, RDL reports. So these four are the very basic things that we are trying to deal with in our day-to-day -day report management platforms. How many of you have worked with linked reports? Okay, few. So in terms of these linked reports, you can create, actually, it's very easy to manage and maintain. Let's say you have a report with a parameter, with a regional thing, so Asia, Pacific, Europe, Middle East, and uh, North America, global. So these are the target areas. So you can create one report, and you can create a report with the same table of figures and the charts. You can design it one place. Once you have that master report with all regions on it, you can create a linked report for each region and allocate the set of users who are able to access, who should actually access only those specific regions. So that is why the linked report comes in very handy. If you want to make any changes to any one of these reports, you don't have to worry about managing and maintaining each and every individual report. You just make changes in your main master report. Everything will be changed automatically. So the linked report is really very easy to manage and maintain. Not necessarily the linked report should be in the same folder. It can point to any other folders, but within the same instance of the report manager. My reports, how many of you have given access to any end users with my reports or used with my reports? So basically, you build, you write your own reports, you can deploy your reports to your my reports location. So basically, there are two types of my reports folder. One is end users my reports. So if there are about 100 users, if 100 of them have their own my reports, they can create and publish their own reports under their my reports folders only. They can't share with anyone else, and they can't see anyone else as well. Whereas an admin's perspective, he can have his own my reports as well as he can see what are the reports that are kept in each individual's my reports folder. So that's admin access ones. In terms of my subscriptions, that is always by default available from version one onwards, you will find it on the top right corner of the screen in a report manager where you will have your my subscriptions button. So when you click on that, you would see what are the subscriptions that you have created, 
only for yourself. Whereas admin can see the subscriptions that have been created by each individual. They can see the status of the report, whether it has been delivered successfully or not. When did that last run? If it has been failed, what is the failure message? So this helps and enables the administrators to troubleshoot the problems in terms of subscriptions. So this option is still available in the report manager. Our deal reports, any reports that you create in terms of uh, with the SSDT or uh, bits, you deploy into your report manager. And these RDL reports, whatever you build, it can be deployed to the report manager. Not necessary that it's not restricted. The report manager can hold only RDL reports. You still can upload any reports on your own. Plus, you also can upload any documents, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, image, to your report manager. How many of you have used this option in the past? Just one. So just in case if you don't know, you can still do it. But the only problem is, once you have a Word document, it is not something like Office 365 or a SharePoint things, but you have to, when you click on the Word document, that will download the option for you. You have to download, you make the changes, and again, you have to upload it back. So that's how it works. But that does have an option for you to manage and maintain every single document about your folder and about the report. So you can have a presentation of a report, how to, how to view these reports, how to manage these dashboards. They can have hundreds of reports. They will have only one screen as a dashboard. So the dashboard will have many drill downs beneath that one. So the other reports would be uh, basically a drill down reports in a hidden perspective. So these reports can be managed and maintained with your report manager in your native mode. What happens in the SharePoint mode? In SharePoint mode, the linked reports do not work. In SharePoint mode, my reports and my subscriptions do not work. But you still can deploy your reports in your SharePoint mode, but you don't use Report Manager to maintain your reports. Instead, you would use your SharePoint configuration portal, whatever you have on that, to manage the things. Does it make a difference? So the reason why I'm covering only these four is these are the very basic things that we need to understand, which is the main thing for this session as well. The next one is the report manager overview. I'm sure you, most of you have worked with the report manager. This is going to be a quick introduction about how a report manager looks like, what are the, like a, basically an environment. So you can view any of the reports that are deployed on your report manager. And your user can view the reports only on the specific folder where he or she can have access to the reports. You can search for a specific report. Let's say you have hundreds and hundreds of reports. And if you want to search for a specific report, and you have about 50 to 80 folders with, uh, in hierarchical basis, you can't really search for that one. So you have an option of search button where you can search for a specific term which search on the title as well as on the description of the each report that got deployed. So this enables any user to easily identify the report. The search comes out with where this report is located into. So it's a kind of like same like Windows Explorer uh, bit of thing. So you can search in that way. Plus, you also have one more search. The, the, there are two search types. One is a search for the report itself. The other search is any terms within the report. So if you open a report, once a report has been executed successfully, you can search for any terms within the report. I'm sure you all know about that one. And uh, that's available when you shoot the report off and when it's been executed successfully. Print, by default, like other applications, you still can print from your report manager. Subscribe, so as we have already seen, subscription option is a very good thing for us. Just in case if you want to run a report first of uh, every month or certain day of every month, you can automate it by creating subscriptions and a schedule for that one. So that makes everyone's life easier. We'll also see a demo on the subscriptions with uh, two types of subscriptions, what we have, uh, regular normal subscriptions, what we have worked with, as well as the data-driven subscriptions, how you can custom build a subscription model. The other one is to create, secure, maintain, and organize. So basically, what do we create here? We create folders. We can create data sources. We can create any type of uh, reports in that one with via report builder. You can create and segregate everything. I can organize it by folders. So folder can be named by functions or groups or departments, wherever you want to actually uh, have them in place. And you can secure them accordingly by folder ways or even individual report items by. By default, the report manager comes out with five roles. The first, first role is the browser. So basically, who has a browser? There's a very basic access, anyone who needs to get into the report manager. When a person has got a browser role, he or she can see the reports that are allocated to that particular person. And they can also create subscriptions only for themselves. They can't create subscription for anyone else. If they want to create a subscription for a group of members and they need to raise a request to the IT, oops, sorry. So subscriptions in that way. Content manager. So in terms of content manager, 
a person who has got this particular role, he can manage the contents within the same specific folder. So he can move around, he can manage it, maintain it, so that sort of things. You don't have to, he don't have to control from the home, but he can control only to the specific folders wherever he's been given access to. Sorry, and also my reports, publisher and report builder, we will still cover about those roles in detail in coming demos. The other options that we have is like report execution properties. You can set up report parameters. You can set up report history, which we'll be covering. And you can retrieve data from analysis services queues and also from other relational data sources. Some, uh, some of the examples of what we have is with SQL Server 2014, you can extract data. I mean, like you can write a report and the data source can point to a SQL Azure cloud. It can point to totally out of the area like Teradata, Oracle, or even like SAP NetWeaver business intelligence uh, cubes. So these are of the areas where it will really enable us to write reports against, so, which is a very cool thing. We don't have to look for any other platform just to write reports for uh, data source keeping it that in um, any other third party databases. And you can access to specific integrities, which we'll be covering in the account security things. I'm just gonna take you a quick look about the uh, port manager overview. I've got some videos on this. So basically the look and feel what you're seeing here is the report manager, how it will look like by default for everyone. The face has been changed only by look and feel of minute things, but it hasn't dramatically changed. That's the reason why people start building their own custom build application or they will go with the SharePoint mode to have them all in one place. So let me zoom a bit. So here you can see the top, you have SQL Server reporting services and you have a, that's the home. And you can change your SQL Server reporting services text in your options to say that as SQL bits reporting services. So whatever you want, you can change that there. In terms of uh, this particular installment, I mean, I'm sorry, in this, in this particular instance, you have an option to create new folder, you have option to create new data source, you have this report builder which you can shoot from your uh, browser directly, and you also have folder settings and you can upload a file not only just the RDL, plus all your other files as well. So here, just for this demo, I have some of the uh, folders been created and some of the reports been written down. So I have business contacts, data sources, HR, uh, product, and report admin. The reason why I have these ones are like, report admin is the final thing what you will take away with you to manage your reports, users, activities that's actually happening. To show the demo, I really need some of the reports and users to be built in for which I have built some reports underneath these ones. And as you have seen, the system, the video actually takes you through on what exactly you can see, what are the options that you have at the moment. And there's a button for details view. So the details view is the only place where you can see all your hidden folders, hidden, I'm sorry, hidden uh, files as well. And uh, you have the top screens, like uh, uh, my subscriptions here, you don't have any subscriptions created. Site settings, I would like to take a pause on that one. So here you can see this is the place where you can make changes to your report server name. So this is the place where you can give your name there. And keep an unlimited number of snapshots in report history. So that's another option that you will do it in the home page. Basically what actually happens is like, I will be covering the report history and snapshots in, in the later slides, but in terms of report history and snapshots, it's nothing but you can have a snapshot of your report at that point of time, and you can collect the things over time. So that's why we, ha we can have reports history-wise. So you can limit the settings here. Microsoft recommends to limit the total number of reports to be stored in your report history because we'll find the reason why we don't have to do it and uh, we don't have to keep uh, limited or unlimited ones. And report timeout, just in case if any reports, how many of you have any worked in any reporting environments where a report first, first time has taken less than a minute and sometimes suddenly started taking 10 minutes? Anyone identify the problems for that one? Yeah? So that one happened because of few reasons. It can happen just because of too many, uh, like bandwidth could be very low, or you can have poor performance on the queries that have been written, or you might have data growth over the time. So when there was no data, you will have some of the reports just running less than a minute when the report has been, data has been grown longer, then you will have your report taking at least 10 minutes time. There are also one more reason why you would, a report might take so much time. If at all you have enabled this report history snapshot options, what happens is, the snapshot of the reports being taken over the time, it is all stored on your reports over database. 
So it extracts all the data from your source databases and stores in your report server database, and it blots that. So what happens is it has to read through everything, and the system's been hammered a lot. So that could be one of the reasons why you can't really get it sorted out. So, and you also have one more option, limit remote uh, report processing to the following number of seconds. It's 1,800 seconds, which is about 30 minutes. So no matter whatever report I run or any users run, any report should not take more than 30 minutes. So if that, you can set a limit on that one. You can still try to reduce the number of seconds if you want to, if that is according to your SLA. So coming back to the home screen, so I'm going to run a few reports to show you how that uh, report would look like. I'm also a bit going to fast forward here. So you can see that the folders are here. When you mouse over each folder, you can see the options to be done. At the moment, like whatever you see is like invisible on mouse over, that gets enabled. Under the business contacts, I have two reports. One is a main dashboard report. The other one is not hidden, but it's still visible, where it's been fed in by the first report. Here you can see there are about 18,000 contacts for each uh, one for the home and uh, 839 for the shipping. So this number of contacts been stored. You have a drill down option to click on that bar chart, which takes you to this particular place. And uh, here, you can see a detailed level of report for business address detail, and a hyperlink has been given down for all the PIN codes. So that PIN code, when you click on that, that further takes you to see which part of the place it is. So it shoots up the Google website automatically for that particular PIN code, and you can change, and obviously you know what, uh, how Google would work, but you're feeding the information basically from your own report manager. In terms of data sources, you're seeing I have two data sources being created, AdventureWorks 2012 and Report Server. Basically, these two data sources are the main ones to supply for my reports that I have deployed into the each folders, what you have seen in the home screen. Just taking a quick look at the AdventureWorks 2012 configuration, I'm sure you have done all these data sources configuration. Just to take a quick look, this is the place where you can choose your options. So in terms of the data source, you have chosen Microsoft SQL Server. Here you can choose, instead of Microsoft SQL Server, any other databases, like whatever I've seen, like Teradata, or even SQL um, uh, Oracle site, and also uh, NetWeaver BI from SAP ones. So these are the options that you would have. I also have a specific folder for HR. The reason why I've created HR, product, and business contacts is because we need to segregate of sensitive data, non-sensitive data, or common reports so anybody can see. So we will be doing admin roles to secure the folders and reports according to the security provided for the each folders. Here you can see, so I'm having a department strength for which I have a list of uh, departments. Clicking on each department, I have uh, each employee under the each departments, and also I have one more link based on the employee's name. So this will give further drill down on to see what's the payroll information about the employee. So here you can see, uh, you can send an email if you want to, to directly to that person. So clicking on that button will take you to this one, and you can send an email. And going back to the uh, folders again, so you can see other folders, I mean other uh, reports within the same folder. You can have them as a dashboard, and also you can create a browser-based, like you can set them up in your uh, bookmarks. You can directly shoot up. You don't have to really go to home button, and then from that you need to every time browse every time. And also when you have your custom-based applications, you can set up your own favorites if you want to, based on whatever you choose here. So this is one of the other report which mentions about the shift details, how many uh, uh, people work in different shifts and different patterns. And I, again, I have drilled down option on that one to see what, who are the employees who are working on that particular shift. So these informations are very helpful in terms of uh, if you're going to use it. So the RTL files, whatever have been designed specifically for the SQL bits will be available. So you can play around, you can make use of any of these things. Also I have various other reports which will be much helpful for you. And uh, one of these reports, I'm trying to put it as in a hidden view, for which I'm, I'm saying, like, hide it in the view. This will not appear in your main view when you open your, uh, to that specific folder. And you can see that when I click on details view, you can see the one which I hit, it's in a different mode. So that's totally kind of disabled one. So that's a quick uh, overlook about how a report server um, works behind the scenes in the middle layer and how data, source, data has been extracted from the data layer and how you would see it in application layer in your report manager and how you would uh, have set up options for your report platform.
So the next one is about the user AD groups, security and report manager. The very good point, and a very, it's a very plus point actually with the report manager tool. In terms of this particular application, you don't have to manage and maintain a separate user list, separate groups for them, but instead you would give the existing AD accounts that is in already in place. So you have your own AD users, which you will use to access your network in your desktop or laptop. When you do that, when you shoot up a, when you shoot out a report manager, it automatically detects your credentials from that, so you don't have a separate login mechanism. So that's a good point. Whereas with other B applications, you may need to create some extra users, and uh, you have to manage and maintain that separately. So you need to have a separate database to maintain these are the AD groups, these are the AD users who, for which I have granted us, like uh, instead of first name dot last name at uh, company name dot com, you will have something like uh, the first name dot uh, initial with number and with something else. So th they have their own policies on how you want to create your uh, roles and users to access the uh, portals. So that's a very good plus point here. We use existing uh, groups. So imagine in this area, like if you have 300 plus reports, 100 plus users, and how would you manage your security? How many of you in a position to uh, address that you have worked on this particular environment, more than 300 reports and 100 plus users? Just raise your hands. Just one or two. So how many of you? I can't go beyond that one, but I worked in a very uh, environment like started with just 300 reports for migration from various other reports. Then it ended up in about 1,500 reports in less than a year because it's been so massive and hit. It's a manufacturing company. It has to grow its own like reporting things. When they know about the reporting power, they want more. They become that's like it's like they are very hunger to learn and what's actually happening in the manufacturing systems. They need more dashboards. They need more reports to see what they want to do. Now, here are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. How do you secure individual items when you have this type of situation, when you have more than 300 reports, 100 plus users, and how would you do it? And how would you secure items in groups? You need to categorize them into separate groups. So if one person is in one group and the same person is in another group, he will obviously have access to the other areas as well. So you need to be in a position to play it fairly. And uh, once you have created a specific environment, an architecture has been built in the roles and authorizations, how would you see it? Again, you can write some special queries against your reports over database, and you can see which user or which groups have got access to which reports with the location paths, and how many times they have used those reports. You can have all of these ones from report server. How many of you have written custom scripts to see what's actually happening in report server? Just few. So, but you were trying to see what's actually happening behind the scenes, which is good. Now, in terms of security, I've already mentioned that uh, we have role-based ones. So this enables us to manage reports, users, and uh, the folders, each in entities within the report manager, very good. And also permission-based. Permission-based in the sense like it can be very folder-wise and also with specific to the report-wise. In predefined roles, we have already seen that we have browser, we have uh, My Reports, Publisher, Content Manager, and Report Builder. So Report Builder is a place where you will enable any user to create his own self-service reports. So he can shoot out a Report Builder. It's a thin client, which is based from browser. Actually, it, it, will, it looks like your default Microsoft uh, Word, Excel, something like that. It's a very thin, thin client. You can use that to build a report and you can use that to build uh, like with simple table of figures or charts, and you can deploy it to your reports. I have a quick video on the user AD groups. I'm going to a bit fast forward here. Um, I'm showing you here about the logins what's been given on the SQL Server Management Studio. This has got nothing to do with the report manager. So there is no restrictions, I mean, like there is no um, thing that you have to give every user access to your database as well as to your report manager to access reports. You don't have to do it unless and until you know some of the business users who want to query their reports, you can give those specific users on this one. The reason why I'm relating to these ones is if a user has been restricted to see some of the reports, that means he's also restricted to see those data in the reports, of, I mean, in the SQL Server Management Studio. He should, be, he should not be in a position to query any of the data reports coming from the Management Studio directly. For that reason, you need to be in a position to document properly, analyze. You can, again, write queries against these ones to see which user has got access to which databases and which tables. Then you need to analyze. You have to compare them. 
manually or you, you can build up your own systems, you can see it very easily. You make, uh, that makes your life easier because you don't want to be uh, in a position to take punches every day to say that I've restricted access to one of that particular user for a sensitive information on HR, and, but he can query his own data. How many of you were in that situation? Given wrong access to databases when you know that he can't access that particular report related data in the report manager. None? So you're doing a good job then. So I'm going a bit fast forward. So that's the login place. And for each database, you will have uh, security. And you can set up your users on that one. In terms of uh, report manager, for every folder, you can click on that security tab. And under the security tab, you will be creating a new role assignment. You know that a new role assignment, what, whenever you create, that will be applied to that folder. Any reports underneath that will have parent item security. So any, any security has been placed by the parent folder will also go to the each reports. If you want to give access to only specific reports under one folder, then you need to edit item security so that you will break the chain of parent security in that one. So here I'm giving different levels of roles for different users for different folders specifically for uh, product or HR, based on the sensitive information, based on the users list. So I'm sure you, you all play with the uh, roles and authorizations and how would you access the report manager things. Um, as we have very less time, I'm just going to uh, move to the next sections. Subscriptions. How many of you worked with subscriptions? Mm, one quarter of you. So when you deal with subscriptions, how many of you create subscriptions for yourself as well as to others? Just few. OK. How many of you know that when you create a subscription, you will have some problem when you or the colleague leaves? Good. How many of you have been in that position? And what did you take? What actions did you take? Create a job to update to the owner. Yes. Yes, to the system user, you'll allocate. I have a separate slides to cover up that as well, so we will see that in detail. So in terms of subscriptions, like it's an, uh, you don't have to really wait for an, uh, to run a report on demand. You can uh, schedule it for uh, specific times. And I'll have a demo to show you on uh, subscriptions, just as simple subscriptions and also data-driven subscriptions. And as you can see, it's like a push delivery of reports by using email and also to your shared drive. And uh, you can archive reports on a shared drive and send large reports to disk. So you have plenty of uh, other benefits that you have with your subscriptions area. So I'm going to create a simple subscriptions here. So with business address analysis, I manage uh, that particular folder, and I can see these many number of tabs are possible for me. In subscriptions, I'm going to create a new subscription, and also you can see new data-driven subscriptions next to that. How many of you used data-driven subscriptions? I, I know I asked the same question already. Um, in terms of data-driven subscriptions, did you see how successful it is? It's like you don't have to really wait for the data to come in. When the, whenever the data is available, the subscription shoots out. So there are plenty of things that really happens. It's a really very good thing, actually. In this place, a simple subscription, this is uh, given to a shared drive. So you give access to the shared drive, and uh, you are exporting the data in a, any of these file formats. But here, I'm going to choose PDF. And you have to give your username and password. But a painful task whenever you create a subscription is once you've created a subscription and once you've given a schedule, you make any changes to the schedule, every time you have to give your password again. So it resets. So any changes being done, so you have to make sure that you have to remember those ones because at times you may need to you may be in a position to create many uh, drive based subscriptions if that is the case you may have different ad accounts for that specific uh, folders so you need to remember those username and passwords as well so here a simple subscription just for one off here i'm creating for uh, a specific time and I can set a subscription to say that to end the subscription at this point of time. So I don't want to run the subscriptions forever. See, once I have done this, you can see the password has been lost. So you have to re-enter the password and validate and say OK. And once you are done, you can see from your My Subscriptions, 
uh, uh, the trigger is the time subscription and the status is new subscriptions. When it's new, that has never ran since the subscription has been set up. So it will actually have a different status when you have a subscription run successfully. So I'm going to a different report. And here I'm creating a, a new data-driven based subscription. So basically here, it's a bit painful because you have to go through six, seven steps to successfully build a data-driven subscription. I'm naming this subscription uh, with a name like custom method here. And I'm choosing to, this subscription to be delivered by email. And uh, you have option of specifying the shared data source or the specify the any data source for this subscri subscription specifically. In that case, I've chosen the already existing data source, which is AdventureWorks 2012. And uh, that's a step two. Then I'm going to the step three. Here is the place where you would write your T-SQL query. So you can make sure that SQL query works in your management studio first. Then you write a simple query to see what actually uh, the su subscription should be based on this particular T-SQL. So here it's a simple query to say that uh, person or address type, I'm just saying where name is equal to home. And I'm giving a validate button. It said query validated successfully. So you don't have to worry about your typing around queries on that one. Again, the best practice is to ensure that the query works in your management studio. Step four, this is the place where you would set to whom the reports should be delivered. So the end users, to CC, BCC, you can set these options. Whereas you can't set these options in terms of the other areas. So in here too, you can custom based ones. So based on the names that are retrieved from the SQL query, you can choose the option or you can hard code this. In this case, I have hard coded my colleague's uh, email ID, which is a normal Gmail account. How many of you have ever created a subscription for external customers and uh, you have noticed that that's not been delivered? Do you know the reason for that? It could be a problem with your uh, network. So network setup, what they would do is you can't send external emails automatically to any other third party companies. So you need to check with your IT guys, and then you need to say that whatever that company is. So yeah, if I'm sending an email from money at uraskillman.com to some other, somebody else, if I'm gonna try to automate it to sqlbits.com or microsoft.com, then that may be blocked. So you need to enable any address with that particular name, microsoft.com or sqlbits.com, have to be allowed. So in that is the case, the subscriptions will be delivered. So after giving that one, I've come to the step five. So here I'm saying get the values from the database, which is the name. And uh, the last step is uh, when the subscription has been processed. So you can do this on a schedule. Again, you would create a new schedule for that. Again, I'm giving an option to end the subscription at one point of time, then I say finish. So you can see that it's about six, seven steps to do a data-driven subscriptions. It's really very effective. Uh, you can give a try in your uh, work environment. It does, uh, you can see the only difference between data-driven subscription and subscription is based on the uh, logo, the icon on that one. So let me zoom that up. You can see data-driven, a database behind that email thing. So that's the only difference that you can make a difference, quick understanding of what a, a regular subscription and a data-driven one is. Linked reports. So I'm sure you already have worked with linked reports in certain uh, areas. Um, the examples, whatever I've given, I also have a demo on this one. I'll quickly fast forward to ensure that how we can better understand a linked report. So a report system, uh, server items, so an existing report access point. So you don't have to, or you don't have to give them access. I've already given an explanation of uh, regional reports. So certain regions, whatever the uh, sales or finance things that you want to show it to only the specific regions, you can create those specific users in that group, and you can assign that user to the specific linked report which has got a parameter of that specific region. So that's the way you would link it and you ensure that you have created a credentials and you secure your reports for each region. And below are the specific properties to linked reports. So by default that applies to everything, but in terms of linked reports, here you need to have your property settings and uh, security. You need to set up a parameter if you, have, if you want to, or without a parameter you still can create a linked report. And um, these are all the main options, what you would see. And maintenance on these linked reports is very, very easy.
So here I'm creating a new folder to totally distinguish, to put these linked reports in a separate area when I have the sourced report coming from a different place. So I'm creating a new folder called linked reports. And uh, that is there. And you also have the other reports which are based in a different folders. So as simple uh, to see is like how it really looks in this point of view. We are not going to deploy anything to this folder, but we are going to create a report under this folder based on a report which resides on some other folder. So here I'm taking an example of business contacts folder, and I have a business address analysis report. Then I simply choose the option of create linked report in the mouse over. So here I would say I give the name of the report, and I need to choose the location. Once it is chosen, that particular report will create a linked one on the new folder wherever we have created. Unfortunately, I can't fast forward this video because it has got some issues. So it is uh, happy playing on its own. So I've chosen a folder, the linked reports. And you also have to see any, when you create a new linked report, if you're able to see the, any reports, I mean, any folders, that means you're only given access to those specific folders. You can't put something in a new folder that exists for somebody else's area. So in this place, you can see linked reports folder. I now have a report. And you can see the icon on it, how it looks. A report with a chain on it. OK, so that's how you create a linked report. Report history, a killer or a saver. How many of you ever used a report history? Good, 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 good. And uh, like I said, do you know that report server does have some problem with holding so many number of report histories? Yeah, so we'll see that in a minute. So it's a collection of report snapshots. What is a report history? What is a snapshot? So a collection of snapshots. Imagine you have a camera, you take a picture of yourself. Now, and you take a picture of yourself on a daily basis or next year, probably in the same SQL Bits event. You will have two pictures, how I looked in the last SQL Bits, in SQL Bits 12, and how I'll, I'm looking in SQL Bits 13. So I'm just fast forwarding that way. So that's a difference. You can't change the history. Same way, you are running a report at this point of time where your data has got updates on it. When you take a picture of your re uh, report, that means a snapshot. It takes everything, offloads all the data from the source. It loads everything into your reports of a database. What happens that is a case? It's a good for you in one side, which case like you can compare it later, how it looked in terms of not only what are the data available at the time, but also you can easily track the cosmetics. You can easily track the structure of the report. Like you, ha you might have had uh, two table of figures on one chart, and now it has been changed. So you, over the time, when you take snapshots of your reports at that point of time, it's been stored in your report history. And uh, users availability, and it's on demand on schedule. You can create that one. So edit item permissions, view delete. So that means you can edit your reports, snapshots, and you can modify it. Modify in the sense like once you have taken a snapshot, you can export the data and you can uh, give a permission on that particular one. And again, you will have a certain like, same security being applied on that. Now, a question. Report history is a killer. In what way? Because the, you, you remember the option what I've shown you on the initial video where we had a limit the number of report history to this many numbers. So recommended is about to have, based on your data sets, you can have 20 to 30 maximum, not more than that. Because your report server is going to be killed just because of that. And if you have more than 300, 400 reports, the other reports are going to stagger. So the server will be hammered a lot just because of that reason. You can create a report history manually, as well as you can create a report history automatically. So you can schedule the report. Report history is a saver in what other ways? When you have your reports, like I've already given you an example, you can see how a report looked with data, with the structure over the period of time. You can compare these snapshots. So that's a place where you can really save. But how long you can do it? 
That's the problem here. So you need to find an option to do it. I've been in a position and I've chosen the option one here. So what I have done is they were creating report snapshots. A report, usually time taken to run that particular report was about 15 to 18 minutes roughly because of all the analysis, all the data, big chunk of data that comes through. So these guys, were, they were taking the reports at least 20, 30 times, um, uh, once in a quarter actually. So over the period of year, it has been grown like anything. And that's been a showstopper as well. When that has come to that position, what we did was we went to the previous histories, export the data into an Excel or PDF or HTML, whatever format you want to, and save it in a local drive and delete that report history. That means the whole history, that particular one which holds the data, audio, everything has been deleted off, and your reports of a database have got some breathing space to play and to render your reports very quickly. Then you can create a simple HTML file which I have done in the past, and I have hooked to say this is January month's first one, then January's first, uh, second, third for how many reports I have, how many report snapshots, I have given the attachments there. So that HTML can be accessed within your report manager. So you can say like these are the report histories I have. For the past histories, please click on that link. That will shoot up another HTML file where you will have access to download all your Excel PDFs and other things. That's a good option for you to save your reports for the report history in the past. You also have second option is to create a simple subscription, put it in a shared drive when you know the amount of uh, Excel or PDF has been generated is large, quite large. So this is also a good example. And the third one is once you have uh, at certain point of time, once you have your report server database been grown, once in a quarter you take a backup of your whole report server database and save it, you can use that for later purpose. Of these, I would say the first and second one is very good option for me. And the third option is like a bit of maintenance side. You need to rely on database administrators to do that bit. How many of you have ever done this particular one to overcome this problem with report history? You find it useful then? So this is a place where you would really helpful. You can make use of report histories and how you can preserve all your history over time. I'm going to show you a demo after this one in terms of report history and snapshots. So snapshots and comparisons, it reduces load on database. So basically, when you have a report history, imagine I've already mentioned a report took 15 to 18 minutes to load, to run. When you have your report history, what happens is when you click off the button, instant, it comes in immediately because that's been stored within the reports of a database with the data, everything on it. Okay, so that makes your life much easier. And again, it's a scary process. All your layout information stays as is. What happened on that day? You might have changed as part of your change request to change the reports, structure, or anything. But that being preserved. That is very helpful for your data analysis and structural analysis in your future to make any more change requests. And that helps any decision making for the management. And you can also do any future enhancements with that one. Let me quickly show you uh, the demo for snapshots and report history. So here I have the product folder where it has got plenty of reports on it. So I'm going to total received quantity, manage, and I have a snapshot options in that I have option to store all report snapshots in history. So that's a button where I enable the option to store all the snapshots in the report history. Report history tab is just above the snapshot uh, options, which we can see there, and uh, you're uh, creating in this example, I'm creating a hourly basis. So for every one hour after 3 p.m., I'm creating the subscription, and I want the subscription to end exactly on the next day. And I say okay. I have to enable my snapshot options on this, and also I have, I'm giving the option of limit the copies of report history from. 20 to 30. So that means I'm okay, this is not a really big junk of data. Imagine if you have hundreds of users and 300 more reports and 500 reports, if you each one create a report history, you can imagine how big the database is going to be, the report server database. So I'm going to show you an example of report history. Here you have an option of creating a new snapshot manually. So I'm creating total stock quantity and just click off the button, you can see how the report is going to come out. This is a quick example of showing you the total stock quantity. It's a meter, which varies from 150,000 to 2.5 million. 
So this snapshot has been taken at that particular uh, time on that specific date. Now, what happens over the period of time if anything has been changed on the base data? So for that, I'm going to delete some data in this particular area. I've taken a backup of these uh, tables anyway. This is not something that you would do in your live system, but this is what would happen. So for this example, I'm giving you an example of showing based on data changes how your report snapshot would differ. So here I'm giving you a simple example of uh, I'm trying to analyze purchasing purchase order detail. Of that, I can see two records. I mean, like coming through because of the two records uh, I've chosen to. All I'm trying to see is the structure of the table, how it looks like. And um, I'm taking a due date on that. I'm seeing the max due date. So the max due date comes out as 22nd of November 2008. So that's the maximum date on the purchase order detail, what we have. Now I'm sending a simple command of deleting from purchasing on that one, where due date is less than or equal to that specific date. So it said 2,683 records have been affected. So what that means, you don't have this many data in your server now. Let's try to take another report uh, history snapshot. So I've taken a second one. You can see the first one has been taken at 145.18. The other one is taken at 146.25. So in between this time, I've made some changes to the data itself. Now I'm shooting that in a new window. You can see the data has been changed. Now I'm switching over to the tab, first tab where it has got the meter in almost near 2.5 uh, million and now it has been reduced to almost 1.2 million, something like that. Do you see the difference on your snapshot? How you would have the same report if you run the report now, it would run automatically, obviously, in the same way. But when you compare it, you can see how it was at that time, how it is now. That's a very simple example on that one. Can I override report server database? This is the question which I asked you earlier. You, some of you have already worked on managing the report server database. How many of you have worked in modifying something on the report server database itself? And do you think that is healthy to do that? As you all know, report server database is the main thing. Like system databases, report server database do have its own TEMDB, which is the report server TEMDB, and uh, you have all the contents. So report server database manages and maintains roles, authorizations, user security reports, location of the files. Any activities that's been happening on the report manager is being logged in the report server database. That means you can interact and you can see based on whatever happened in the report manager, the usage can be identified. Some facts support the report server database. So the table structure is used to optimize server operations. Any structure of the tables, whatever you're working on in your report server database, please, please do not ever make any changes to the structure because Microsoft do make their changes and that, that's been optimized to improve the performance of the report manager. If you make any changes, any of the future upgrades or patches that whatever you're doing, that will not be supported on that particular one because the structure has been changed there. So Microsoft may change the table structure from one version to another, so you need to be keep that in mind. But what we will do in terms of uh, overriding the report server is I've come across a situation where uh, I had a few contractors working for me for one of the clients, and they have created subscriptions on the user's, uh, user's behalf. At that point of time, the contractor left. So the report subscription was working till then. The policy of the company was to keep the AD account active for two months uh, and disable it and then delete it later. So once the account has been gone totally, the subscription all failed. The end user did not re receive the reports. So at this point of time, you need to go to the report server. You need to identify what these uh, particular reports are and who are the uh, subscri subscriber owners are. Then you need to modify them to ensure to take it to your own account. And again, that's, that's going to be a problem when you leave or uh, I leave to the company. So that is the place where you need to identify a service account and then allocate to that one. So in that case, your report subscriptions will not fail. That's the only place you can modify your data and touch C and C. If you're really very confident with that, you can work on that. Otherwise, please do not touch the reports of a database. Report Builder, a closer look. Um, we are almost very nearby. So Report Builder is one of the options where you can build your own reports from the browser-based one. So I'll go to the demo directly so you can better understand. So Report Builder option is just third button out there. When you click on that, it's going to shoot up the uh, thin client. It's going to take a while, about 30 seconds to 45 seconds to load, but uh, I'm going to fast forward that. So this is a very good uh, point when I uh, run these type of sessions with demos, because you don't have to rush up doing and you don't have to wait for that one. And you can fast forward, you can play with your time. 
So it just loads the report builder 3.0, and you can see it gives us option to create a new report or new data set or open the existing ones, whatever you have. So I'm going to uh, create a new one here. And you can see the options out here. It's same. It looks like the same um, what you have in your SSDT when you have a report manager environment, sorry, report builder environment in that one. You have the same built-in fields on that, and you also have the parameters, images, data sources, and databases, data sets to be created. And I'm, I'm creating a new data source. And this is the place where it helps you to see what are the available data sources that you can create and you can write your report against. And that's a query being given. And I have option to create a layer, tables, charts, graphs, gauges, and everything. And I'm creating a tab there. And I, when I preview that report, that's how it looks, a simple report on the report builder. And then I save it. You can see that has opened up the report manager location. And you can see all the folders that you have seen in your report manager too. And I save it. I'm going back to the uh, report manager. You can see the new report, whatever I've uh, created. It's there, and it's loading now. That's, that's there. So you can still make some modification on the report builder. Again, going back to that, opening that, same one. You can make any cosmetic changes, whatever you want to. You can simply give a save, and it goes there. You don't have to deploy. Just simply save. It goes into the report manager automatically. So that's the report manager. I'm, I'm a report builder, how you can uh, deploy the reports or save the reports into your report manager area. And uh, as I have said, the data source supported are SQL, Azure, Oracle, SAP Network, BY, and other things. You can also create table wizard, uh, matrix wizard, and list wizard, which are very basic versions of whatever you have on your already existing tools. Admin dashboard, this is the final bit, a highlighting part, which will all enable you to better manage your report server users, roles, authorities, reports, locations, and everything. So it's a simple dashboard. I'm going to zoom a bit. So here it gives you an example of how many succeeded subscriptions I have and how many failed subscriptions I have. Um, I'm going to show you the dashboard quickly. So I've got reports like business contacts, HR, and uh, linked reports, whatever I've created new, and how will I manage these reports? So that I will be doing it with the admin dashboard. So this is how admin dashboard looks like. Um, I have a few tabs here, like tabs in the sense like few areas with different charts to see. Let me zoom that up a bit. So here you have a meter to see how many uh, reports succeeded and how many reports failed. And here I have report execution analysis. How many reports have been aborted? How many reports have been said not found? How many succeeded reports? 242. And here I have reports modified by users in live environment. You're given access to the business users to modify any reports. But you want to monitor how many reports have been modified by end users in the live. Because live systems are only very specific only for the developers. It's very typical scenarios. Only business users will also have access to the live reports, which is not a best practice, but the world is changing. Everybody have access to everything in that way. And uh, data sources created by user. Here I have report security analysis. So here I can see uh, we have already seen five different types of roles, browser, content manager, my reports, publisher, and report builder. You can see how many, report, how many users been given access to each roles, so which can be monitored on this area. And users and security analysis, here you can see how many number of users in a different perspective. And you can see report creates modified in the last seven days in life. That also gives you a visibility on how many reports been modified or created brand new, been deployed in the live environment by each user. So that's given there. And uh, that's not only an immediate dashboard for you, but you also have drill down options on that, where you can click on each one of them, and you can see what is behind that one. So when I click on that, you can see report security details. It gives, under content manager, these are the report users. These are the report names. And that's the description given for that particular role. So basically, you are interacting with your report server database instead of report uh, any of the end user database. Because this is the place where you are actually playing, and what you should know what actually you're doing, what your users are doing. And here it gives the subscription status. It says like how many succeeded and how many failed. 
So I'm a bit fast forwarding. Anyway, this video will be available and uh, uh, slides are also going to be available. I'll have, I will be sharing the scripts. Any questions you can shoot out now. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming down for Sickle Bits and thanks for coming down to uh, this session. Thank you.